Hey everyone, today I'm making some storyboards for class, or rather I'm taking some storyboards that my teammates drew and I'm turning them into an animatic in After Effects. There are some interesting things that go into making an animatic in After Effects, and I've done some research to find out how it works, so I thought I'd make a video and show you some of the tricks on making an animatic with After Effects. This video I'm going to make right now is a little bit out of sequence because I've already started the uh, boards, and that's when I decided, hey, I'll make a video out of this. So first I'm going to show you how to do a camera pullout effect in the middle of your storyboards. And then, later on, I'll go back and show you how to set up the whole storyboard uh, composition, if you will. So if you bear with me, you'll see first how to do a camera pullout, and then, as I go on making the boards tonight, I'll show you how to set up a new composition, retime it, and those things. So right now, I'm working here in After Effects. I've got all of these nice frames imported from my friends, my teammates who have been drawing these storyboards. And as you can see, this whole sequence, um, this whole sequence over here, this whole sequence of frames I've put into its own sequence. Wow, that's word sequence is used too many times. And if you see me looking over here, it's because this is where my monitor is and this is where my camera is. So here we have each frame lasting one second. And with some exceptions, you see, I've done some animation here. I'll show you more about that. But each frame lasts one second and I'll show you why this is important later. But we come in we see that I've done a little bit of animation here when it comes to animating the title. When it comes to pulling out, uh, panning over, even a little bit of 3D perspective there. And I'll show you now how to do a really simple uh, camera pan or pull out with a later part here. Um, here we go. So, boy's on the floor. Oh, my apron, my mess. And his dad's like, oh, look at your machine. He's saying, he's saying, you just use that machine. That's all you should do. So what we want to do is... You see the artist here has made a nice little frame for us saying start here, do a truck out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find this. There it is. This clip down the timeline is the exact one we're on. And I'm going to change it a little bit so that we end up with this frame how we want it. But we're going to start first. Okay, here's some important keyboard commands. I'm working on a Mac. So if you're on a PC, pretty much you can just switch out. When I say Option, use Alt instead. I think that's the only difference. So now that I'm in this clip, I'm going to hit I to go to the beginning of the clip in my timeline marker here, just to make sure that I'm really at the beginning. Um, and ooh, I might need to move my little video player here. If I can figure out how to do it. Ooh. Oh, there we go. Very nice. Okay, That's where I'm putting it. So. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to click on this and I'm going to hit T for, not T, that's for opacity. For some reason, T, transparency, opacity, who knows. I'm going to hit P for position. Uh, and I'm, well, actually I'm just going to open up the whole thing. I'm going to set a keyframe for position, scale, and not opacity this time. And uh, what I'll do is then go over a little bit. I don't care really how much time, I'm just gonna leave some time in here. I'm gonna make a key also, so that I know that at least in one of these places I can end up back at the original size. Um, so let's go back to frame one here. Now, here's a nifty tool too. If you're scrubbing around your time slider and you wanna snap to keyframes, just hold down shift and it'll snap to keys. If I had taken 10 minutes to look up these sh keyboard shortcuts, years ago I would have saved myself hours. Okay, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna scale this up and we're gonna move it over. So we can see that he's oops. So we can scale it up again, move it over again. So so we can see that he's gonna be looking, going, huh? Looking at what? I'm not gonna follow her guidelines exactly because I'm giving myself some artistic interpretation. We'll see if I get yelled at later. Probably not. Maybe. I don't know. Okay. And now you can see, whoop, we have a nice truck out there. And, you know, maybe 
maybe I don't really care about having these panel things on the bottom. So maybe I, I'm going to leave this pulled in a little bit. So you can see that the focus is on the machine there. Yeah, yeah, something like that. That's looking good. So you truck out a little bit and Yeah, dad's like, hey, machine. The boy's like, oh, machine. Oh, fine. And what we're going to do is then turn these keyframes, select them, right-click on them, and I'm going to turn them into an easy ease with the keyframe assistant, and that'll make it a little bit easier in its motion. Now, something I think I might do also is move these keyframes over a little bit so there's a little hesitation before this pullout happens. Yeah, I like that. Now you notice that this timing is really fast, but that's because I don't care that it's fast because later we're going to retime it in another composition. So all I have to worry about is that this motion happens correctly, not about the timing, which is wonderful. I'm going to save my project so I don't lose it and uh, move on. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So um, what I'll do now is stop the video. And I will, sh I will later on make a new video about starting new with some new frames, dropping them in, and the whole retiming thing. So you can see how that works. Okay. Goodbye.